serves me right not for watching the time on maybe it just ran out on me. I don't think he's done that while I've been doing this vid screen. Or if it has, it's only a few times. First time I did it, it was all time, just kind of like lost track of what we're doing. So the gradient, for every 1% increase in moisture content, the calorific value of the wood decreases by 0.0758. What are the units? Uh, where is it? Let me go on the units of CMEC. I read the units. Oh, here we go. Megawatt hour per ton. Megawatt hour per ton. Yeah. In terms of the intercept, so if you look, that's got like a 0%. So it's a calorific value when the wood is burned down. Value of 5.35 when the wood has 0% moisture. So it's so use the equation to estimate it as 20%. So if x is 27, and I've got y is minus 0.0758 times 27 plus 5.35. So y is 3.30 uh, mega or hour per ton. Okay. So we'll give a general reason why your equation should not be used to estimate the woods. Well, okay. So for 80%, well, we're going to get negative, aren't we? We're extrapolating. And for when on, 80% will be a negative value of calorific uh, content. That doesn't make sense. So 80 is extrapolating. So not sure how good we'll do, how good. The result will be it actually is a negative calorific value. So instead of the heat giving off energy, it's kind of like it's drawing in energy from around it, which is just not happens, does it? it doesn't do that. Uh, So kind of moving on for that one, if I use um, 80, so I've got minus 0 0.0758 times 80 plus 5.35 gives me a calorific value of minus 0.71 mega watt hour per ton. Uh, unrealistic value, it can't be negative. Right. The fear of hoping, maybe, this may be the end of this lesson, who knows? No, it's not! There's more! <laughs> right, let's keep going then. Um, right, so it says the results from an experiment in which different masses were placed on a spring resulted in the length of spring. Uh, so that's like a standard physics-y type question. Let's get the calculator up. Um, that's it. So we've got menu to put the mass in to list one. So I'm going to take it down. Three, four. Just press the rate three small out. So then I've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So we've got different masses on. It gives 48. 55.1, 56.3, got to check the time again, so I'm absolutely running out of time. Uh, 61.2, and 68. Uh, 
and teaching as well soon. Right, so it says, so I've done that, then F2 for calc, so F2 for calc, I've done that. Uh, I've got list one, list two in our set, yep, because we've done the right bit like that. And then F3 for regression, and then F1, so F3, F1, and then F1 again. F1. <laughs> And it gives us our A and our B values. So I've got Y. Now you've got to be careful with this. Um, hang on. Let's go back. Let's do it as that one. F2, sorry. There. So I've got A plus BX. So Y is 43.89 plus 0.2305X. What's quite nice. It gives us the R value of 0.9a, which is very strong, positive correlation. Near perfect, really, isn't it? Near perfect, strong correlation. Right, there's a U try there now. Let's hope this is the end of this lesson. I hope so. It's going on forever. Uh, so, the question for you there, you have a go at that one. All to do with the large data set, so it's lovely. Right. So again, R value. Let's see what's on the next page. Yay! The end of the lesson. Well done. <laughs> Bye.